I have discovered the joy of text. Text as in words, not as in thumbing on a phone, sending messages, but uh, text on the page, words, the joy of words on the page. In fact, I've spent um, most of this morning, after booking a train ticket to Liverpool for my sister's 70th birthday this weekend, I've spent this morning editing some of my, what I am calling, anecdotes for um, the imminent publication of my new book, E45, Topical Applications to Soothe the Soul, is the working title and subtitle. I thought of packaging it in a tub of E45 cream, that would be novel, wouldn't it? But probably superfluous. And I've discovered late in life the absolute delight of writing spontaneously as part of my course. I'll tell you about a bit about that in a moment. Um, and then t it turns out you get a double dose of enjoyment when it comes back to editing it. I've noticed in the ratio of three to one. So an hour writing, for example, would require, in my hands anyway, three hours of editing, which to some people might sound like torture, but to me, certainly this morning, was uh, an absolute delight. Um, I, it's, um, it's actually homework. <laughs> I've never been so enamoured of homework. Um, I'm doing an online course with Natalie Goldberg and about 299 other people, uh, which I started, I think, in April. I don't know how many. I don't know how many other students are still persevering, but uh, I'm loving it, and um, that follows on from um, another online course with the. Um, diarist and Radio 4 American presenter David Sedaris who's uh, very amusing and uh, I would like to think that having completed his course I've picked up uh, one or two hints and tips. Hello. Um, what's that expression? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery? Well i let you be the judge of that. Um, it will be out next month. And uh, yes, of course, you can put your name down for a copy. 45 anecdotes to soothe the soul. But um, in one of my anecdotes this morning, I was recalling um, arriving just uh, too late uh, to see my father before he died. And uh, one of the things I did was to make peace with him. I wrote a poem, really, a poem of forgiveness. I thought, let's sleeping dogs lie. Or in his case, it turns out, um, I've referred to him as a rascal. Let sleeping rascals lie. And it's true, I don't uh, hold any grudge. I don't think so. And I, But then I don't think of him much from day to day, month to month. So, um, I could hardly say I miss him. And uh, I went looking for this. I'd, I'd made a call. <laughs> I had the presence of mind. <laughs> Can you believe this? I had the presence of mind in the room where he died and was actually li lying in state in his coffin. Not, not yet. The lid was on but not screwed down. And I had the presence of mind to, first of all, to write this poem of forgiveness, but I also made a copy <laughs> because I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be able to not deny that I'd actually forgiven him. So um, uh, I made a copy and I put it in one of my journals, and I went downstairs to my uh, shelves, bookshelves, to look for it to remind myself what I'd put. 
well it was 20 years ago and I've been keeping journals for all of that time and I couldn't find it but what I did find was a I'd got a, a sort of a report back uh, if you like a, a teacher's marking of guess what a writing exercise that I'd done over 20 years ago when I had enrolled on this is before the internet I mean come on really um, this was bef before dial-up modems and I had um, enrolled on and paid for then um, a, a by post uh, writing course so I, it, it must have been in my bones then in fact the book that associates Natalie Goldberg's course is I've just realized is called writing down the bones uh, so my bones uh, um, were uh, tickled inspired over 20 years ago to do a writing course and without boasting too much um, my course assessment was really uh, rather splendid very pleasing so <laughs> why on earth what what's happened in the intervening 20 years uh, dear I feel like Jim Bowen in bullseye saying to myself look at what you could have won who knows uh, no this is this is a cul-de-sac don't go there but I will just for the purposes of this little chat who knows what I could have been up to now 20 years later if in fact I'd had the courage of my conviction to continue the writing course and then putting little pieces out I did get one article published then actually it was in uh, mind body spirit magazine and it was uh, about uh, the spiritual teacher Jeff Foster, lovely Englishman, very uh, self-deprecating, very amusing actually, very honest, very real. I do recommend him, check him out on YouTube. Jeff with a J, Jeff Foster. I saw him at first in London and then I went to one of his retreats in um, Utrecht. Uh, I can't remember the actual name of the place, had an X in it, in, uh, in Holland. And uh, I, I asked him if it was alright if I wrote this piece for the magazine, and he, he was very happy to contribute. And you can actually, <laughs> I'd forgotten all about this, but you can actually uh, read this if you're at all interested. It's very good. You can read this. Uh, on my five paths um, dot com the five paths all no no spaces of course the five paths dot com and uh, I think one of the menu items is gurus and under there <laughs> there's just one entry uh, for Jeff Foster and he has a, a, a wonderful take uh, if you've suffered the loss of a loved one um, I was going to say recently, uh, not just over the past couple of years of the pandemic, but at all, he's got a very lovely take um, uh, on uh, uh, on how to deal with or coming to terms with uh, grief and loss and death itself. So you might want to check that out. So it turns out um, uh, I'm a bit of a late bloomer when it comes to writing. Um, that was the title of one of the books I used to read to my son Oliver in those in, all those years ago when he was six. Leo the Late Bloomer. Well it's Phil the Late Bloomer and so can I encourage you, <laughs> unlike me, please do not tread water on um, following up on those things which give you great pleasure not just uh, pleasure for for its uh, its own sake for yourself which is a, a completely valid reason to do it if that's what you like bird watching falconry archery any anything that you have a passion for just do that but the other uh, 
flip side of the coin is how many people are you depriving of the benefit of what you've learned through your falconry or whatever, bird watching, whatever it is that you could pass on. How many people have I deprived, <laughs> or maybe, perhaps relieved, <laughs> by not uh, by not writing early and, and publishing books? But my friends, that's that's nearly being rectified with the imminent publication of E45. Uh, so you can check that out on the link below. Go on, you know you can do it. I mean, do your passion, that is, not check out the book. <laughs>